doctor may come across the section. Okay. Today's age, we can't have that. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the regular scheduled council meeting from Monday, November 20th, 2017, at 7 p.m. Mr. Collier, you may have a roll call, please. Mayor Lowry? Here. Mr. Reynolds? Here. Mr. Lindsay? Here. Mr. Lighty? Here. Mr. Rick Lowry? Here. Mr. Lethley? Here. Mr. Cravo? Here. All members present. Thank you. And tonight we'll have an invitation by Councilman John Cravo. We just bow your head. Heavenly Father, we come before you in this wonderful country to where we can sit here and talk about issues and not have the military standing outside guarding. Heavenly Father, we ask for blessings upon the council, upon the people that, that are here, and the people that are new to, and the administration. We thank you for this wonderful time that we have together. In Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. <laughs> Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Actions on the regular scheduled council meeting for November 6, 2017. So, second. Any discussion? No. Any discussion? No. no. Before we uh, actually vote, did anybody notice a mistake on the minutes? On the what? On the minutes. On the minutes. Look, at, look at the date on under minutes, what date I have on there. Um, I noticed that you have your dates wrong, sir. No? Nope. Yes. Oh. I, I have the dates wrong on what minutes we're approving, but I did correct them on the official copy. I called that this morning. Okay. Um, we okay. can't, we're at, we'd actually be voting on. Um, no, wait a minute. Where's the meeting? Minutes? No, right. mine, mine's all right. 11-6. Yeah. We're all right. Yeah. Yeah. Right no, it's 11 six. Six. No, 11 six. No, no. 11 6. Six, November 6. 11 that six. is wrong. That would be 10, 20, 16, 17, the last time. Oh, to adopt on those 10, 20. Oh, yes. oh there. Oh, okay. One. Okay. And the date's wrong at the previous meeting right. because I have to go back and see where I'm talking. Yeah. What date was that? Oh, again? yeah. It'd be, it'd be uh, 10, 20. No. 10, 6, wait, no, wait a minute. 10, 16, 17. And that was correct in those two minutes. I caught that this morning. So. Mm -hmm. The motion was made by Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. Craybock. I believe got it. Mm -hmm. Hang on. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Lighting? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Ms. Craybocker? Yes. Minutes past seven to zero. Virginia. Moving down to communications, none tonight. Drop to the city manager's report. Good evening, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council, members of the public. I'd like to share with you the city manager's report. Um, under action report, first off, issue four fails. Thank you so much to the voters. Um, so those who are home watching on YouTube, uh, we definitely appreciate your support. And to those sitting in the audience, we definitely appreciate your support as well. I would like to give a uh, thank you to council for uh, passing the ordinance to allow us to spend a little bit of city funds to do that. I think we saw our city workers really rise to the occasion in a very short amount of time to get the word out. Um, I think also the voters have overwhelmingly spoke. It was not even close. So that tells this administration, hopefully tells this council that our citizens do believe, believe we are going in the right direction and we will continue that trend. So again, a big thank you for those of, uh, who helped to defeat issue four. Uh, we will continue on doing the best what we can do with your taxpayer money. And then moving on with the report um, under finance discussion, our finance director, Ms. Colleen Harris. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Mayor, Council, members of the public. I'm going to uh, go over the October 
Finance Report. Total revenue for the month of October was $399,234.64. Total expenses for the month of October, $510,035.43. So our year-to-date revenue collection is $4,899,000. $693.24, and our year-to-date expenditures are $3,821,130.10. The year-to-date collections is about 90% of what we anticipated to collect this year, and our expenditures so far year-to-date is about 62%. For the income tax, general fund income tax collected for the month of September, and again we're, we report one month in the rear on our report, is $75,593.97. The police have percent levy income tax for the month of September, brought in $37,796.98. For a total year to date, so far collected in the general fund of $792,635.12. And the police income tax half percent brought in $394,536.81. For a total collection in the income tax department of $1,187,171.93. The rest of the report is attached. If there's any questions, I can answer them. Do I have any questions from the service? I just have one. I don't know if you can answer it. How are the, um, are you guys getting many calls at the city building as far as people having issues with taxes? Not that it's brought to my attention. Vicki doesn't take care of any calls from anybody that has a question. She's in there and she returns them. But it, it's not been that. I've had to call CCA actually last week. Um, we have a citizen who I will not name had got a letter in the mail because she had some tax, tax, taxes to do. And instead of it's not going to be paid by a certain date, they're going to be worn out for an arrest. Well, the citizen tried to call CCA on three different occasions, was on hold for 45 minutes every single time. Um, once she would get a hold of someone on CCA, she would tell them the situation and they put her back on hold saying, I can get the right person. So the citizen did shoot me an email. Um, normally, I don't get involved in that kind of things, but with the nature of what was going on, I decided to call CCA myself, and I flat out told them, listen, this is the first year contract with you guys. This is not the first time we've heard of bad customer service you're giving our citizens. Shape up. Your first year is really your shot to show us you're doing a good job, and quite frankly, our council's not gonna put up with you guys putting on people hold for 45 minutes. If you need to hire more people, you need to hire more people. So immediately after, uh, this resident got a call within two minutes. So um, hopefully they either hire some people for their call center or they look at other ways to uh, to make it a better experience, at least for our citizens. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Adams? Yes, sir. Uh, that surprised me they would send out a thing saying that there's going to be a warrant yeah. for your arrest. I'm sure that wasn't a scam. I mean, that's, no, that's not as much. Like, I work at the Attorney General's office. We get calls all the time, our, our staff does, about, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, there's a warrant after you. The IRS is after you. It was and, saying if it wasn't paid by a certain date, then it will be issued. So the, the letter, letter was a warning. And if you're near PACs due on taxes, absolutely, they can send you out. They can, they can put you up to that measure. Quite frankly, I went through before with City Dig. So. Really? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Hmm. <laughs> oh, man, <amazing. laughs> how do you not love that guy? Yeah, I mean, how do you not just want to just come every like time you see him? All right, thank you very much, Ms. Harris. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Moving. Are we okay? Miss Harris, are, you, are we done with the finance? Yes. Okay. And moving on with the city manager report or services discussion with our service director, Mr. Howard Kiko. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, Mayor, Council, members of the public. I will start off with our service departments. Uh, Street department is currently in the last week of our first collection period. 
Uh, the section, second collection period will start next week and end December 22nd. We do allow uh, leaves to be dropped off behind the old Madison Street School. There is a leaf pile already started. Please put those there because we have a stone pile, rock pile, and now we have a mulch pile, which is our playground mulch. It's not for mulching flower beds, so it's a special mulch. A little more expensive. Uh, we are still preparing for the winter season. I'm um, looking into one of our dump bodies that we're needing to replace. Other than that, we do have some plows and salt ready to go. Uh, we're preparing CIPs and budget for 2018. Uh, we've been uh, pretty heavy at that. Completed a citywide street sign assessment. Uh, we will utilize this to start some sign repairs so we can add or delete signs and straighten ones that may be leaning. Uh, I've noticed while I was out on some of my projects, uh, we've seen a few that were leaning and maybe they were both there at one time, but cross streets, one of the street signs, kids jump up, whatever, they break them off. So we wanted to go around and we'll do this a little more often so we can make our appearance even greater with, uh, with some of the signs. Uh, hydro flushing is complete. Uh, I did not receive, nor did my water department or fire department that I know of, of any laundry issues or any kind of staining of fixtures or anything like that. So another successful year for our water treatment. Water department, and on your report it says four hydrants. We've actually replaced five uh, hydrants. And I apologize for that error. I got with the superintendent today and we adjusted that. Uh, we still have some adjustments to make to some of the recent installs. Uh, they can be used in case of an emergency, even though one might be facing backwards. And we still have one hydrant left in stock that we will keep in stock in case of an emergency. And when I say that, we typically uh, get our hydrants all for four foot berry depths. We don't order different sizes, so we'll get a riser, and almost all hydrants come with the steamer facing the shoe, because they don't know how you're going to. We got valves coming in some direction, some on 90, so uh, we make those adjustments, but some, will need, some still need to be raised, some need to be rotated. Those parts are uh, on order, or we may have just gotten them. The last thing, softening salt for the water treatment plant is currently out for bid. Uh, bid opening is 1030 on November 27th. Uh, Mr. Bridge will be doing that on my behalf. Hopefully we uh, don't see too much of a price increase. I know from 2016 to 2017 there was not an increase in softening salt. So hopefully we'll hold that steady. Apprentice Drive Phase 3 and 4 reconstruction project uh, is completed and it came under budget by $51,664.50. Um, so that was, uh, that was great for the city of New Carlisle. And I will take these unused funds and add them to next year's uh, street repair budget because they are out of fund 204, which is the street levy funds. Adam Street Water Tower, uh, we had the aviation lights that uh, had burned out. We had been getting some prices and quotes to get uh, the light fixed. Well, we found that we could get the light fixed for free. However, when uh, during that inspection we had done by Suez, or Utility Sales, same company, um, they noted that the ladder did not meet OSHA and no one will now climb to just change light bulbs for free. So we had to spend $4,200 to get that ladder to meet OSHA. And basically that's climbing time and they had to weld each rung to the side of the tank as they go up. Because I guess back in the day it was okay that ladder could rotate around the whole tower. Well now they're not allowed to move. So that had to be completed first. So we're hopefully, lights are off, operational. They are LED now instead of incandescent. So hopefully they last a while, we just hope we don't have to spend any more money, because that tower will get expensive to keep doing these type of repairs. Um, Scarf River Water Tower, still the same information as last, and I, this is not on your report, but because it is the darkness is a lot longer, uh, street light outages. If you do see a street light that is out, uh, please call the city building at 845-9492, extension 11. She will take down the information, and if you can, give the address of where this pole was located and it can be just one side of the street or the other or an intersection and the in a black tag uh, get the numbers off of them. Normally it's a black tag with silver numbers and it'll say MVL for Miami Valley Lighting. If you don't get those, uh, at least just give us a location and we'll come out and write those down and get those turned in. And that is all I have for tonight's report. I can entertain any questions. Uh, the sign at Kennedy Street and Richard Court and point out that Henry is spelled wrong. That's probably on the list, but I'm... <laughs> it's spelled H-N-R-Y. H-N-E-R-Y. H-E-N. Henry at Richard Court? <coughs> Henry at Richard Court. Okay. Um, I think I know. Huh? All these years... The intersection of dyslexic what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so, 
Yeah, we're spending a lot of money on the Adam Street Tower. I thought that was coming down at some point. Eventually, that's all pending the Scarf Road uh, tank project. Okay, so there's no real time period? All based on that tower. So is it five of five hydrants replaced or five of five? Oh, sorry, five of five. Okay, They're both like, changing both. Just five, I was like, all right, I was like, we're, we got one more hydrant than we do. Uh, we had one in stock that I was unaware of. Okay. Um, that's why I had four. We had bought four new ones, and did, I didn't know we had a fifth one in stock, but we did. Uh, Mr. Kitko, can you go in a little bit more depth for me on the uh, Prentice Drive uh, savings of $51,664.50? How does that happen? I don't mean that in a meeting or anything, how does that happen? How could it be a mean way? Well, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, no, no, basically, uh, some of the things are uh, stringent inspection that we don't have any overages. The other thing, too, is sometimes in our estimates, we will look at the area that we're working in. We're working in pit run. Uh, there can be cases where there's uh, clay, so we'll put in some pricing for undercutting the, the sub base. Um, and if you're out there watching them excavate, make sure they excavate to the right depths, don't go too deep, because you can be built for the extra gravel, and then if they don't put enough gravel in and they gotta use more asphalt to get to that grade, then you're gonna get more cost in asphalt. So it's basically uh, checks and balances throughout the project is a lot of it, but then non-performing some items uh, that you don't need, um, or is another portion of it. Okay. What was that? Do you have the number of copies of what that project did cost of it? It came in. Uh, I should have probably put that on there. Um, that's a form of that. I can't remember off the top of my head. That's okay. Almost $52,000 to do that. Yeah, it's $52,000. <laughs> yeah. It was, I was, it was around three fifty-two was the estimate. And I, I think we're just over three hundred thousand. Three. Okay. I think it was over three hundred thousand for the whole project. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Not one more question. Thank you, Mr. Kitko. Appreciate it. I remember once. Who do I ask? You? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I remember once you said something about the different colors of the fibers and that they weren't working. They had yellow paint off or something. I don't remember. Uh, different colors mean different flow characteristics on what the fire department, when they pull up, they'll know how much they can pull off the hydrant. Some mean that max you'll get is 200 gallons a minute, some maybe 1,000. If you see one that has a black bonnet or black caps, that means it's inoperational. It's not it's not operable, and they know that going on to the scene that they can't use it. So it's nice that are black. Black mean, yeah, black. I don't know if one by our house doesn't work, that's fine. But it's got a yellow Yeah, yeah, yellow is just a flow characteristic. Thank you, Mr. Kitko. Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Kitko. And moving on with the city manager report, our fire discussion with our fire chief, Chief Trustee. <coughs> Mayor, Councilman, City Public. Uh, for the month of October, the New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 62 EMS calls in the city, six in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to 24 fire related calls in the city and four in Elizabeth Township. Uh, we had two EMS calls answered by mutual aid by Pike or Bethel Park due to the Met 52 already being on a response. We answered two mutual aid calls for Pike Township and two for Bethel Park. In the month of October, the division responded to two, diff two different overdose calls. Uh, one of those was not a heroin or anything related. It was a, it was a medication. Um, we had the fire prevention open house in October. We had a good turnout in the rain and the weather the way it was. Uh, we're looking next year to hold the open house either on a, the Saturday or Sunday of uh, fire prevention week, I think we'd get a better turnout of a better, and be able to do a, a bigger operation for it. Uh, not in the report as we are moving forward with the March radio swap over. Um, working with uh, another fire chief, I was able to secure uh, someone to write our or to make our template for the radios and to program our radios at a cost of zero. For us, so that that was a large saving to get that done for free. Um, we're still on target right now as of January, moving over to the county and moving to the mark system. <coughs> so in the, in the Daily News and Springfield News Sun, there was an article on Thursday, I believe it was, about uh, Fairborn's EMS services uh, treating an overdose caller and one of the EMSs overdosing on the, the way. Take what? the overdose call, the, the, the uh, 
inflict the, I guess, <coughs> the hospital. So are we prepared for something of that nature? Well, what occurred with that incident was the, at the when they were working the patient, the uh, law enforcement had patted the patient down, which is a normal, before they go into the medic, they have to be patted down. When they emptied his pockets, one of the um, heroin capsules burst, and the powder went everywhere. It was carfentanil, and carfentanil can be absorbed through the skin. And the medic was wearing gloves and everything, but it got onto his arm. And as they were driving to the hospital, the medic in the back when set the medic started swerving and went up front and basically ended up having to climb up into the front of the medic and take over the wheel and get the medic pulled to the side. Um, it was severe enough that when they got to the hospital and put him in a room, two of the nurses that were treating the patient also started having effects from him. So is there any way to prepare for something like that? That just sounds like there's no way to prepare. There's not. Uh, last year we also had a, uh, in, I want to say Miamisburg, had a uh, police officer had the same thing happen to him. He was doing a test on drugs and the capsule broke and the powder got on him and he took his hand and brushed it off his, his shirt and within an hour he was overdosed. Hmm. So it's, it's, we take as much precaution as we can, but do our medics carry narc? Well, I guess we don't carry so much Narcan, can't we? Because if we're using it on them, they're probably not Narcan for the individual. Depends on how, how much we've used on the patient. Right now, the way it stands, we carry eight, uh, eight units of Narcan in each drug bag on the medic. Plus, we also carry two other uh, doses on the battalion vehicle. Okay. I'm just wondering, you just, when I read that, maybe concerned about your guys' safety out there. It is. A lot of our people are, we're, we're excuse me, looking more and more at when we go into the scene, what's going on, and if we do, if we, we do have that happen, if we see that a capsule broke or there's a sub powder substance or anything, we're automatically looking at okay, we have to put five-inch suits on. All right. <coughs> Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Owens. Mr. Kerwalker. Uh, I saw on the news today. And I, I saw it when I was watching the news. Watching BC that uh, there's a high rate of suicide starting about again, you know, so, and during this time of the year. Yeah. What did, you know, are we seeing anything like that here? Not per se. Due to the holiday season, we've had one. We did have one, uh, one, one, one attempt. Okay. Was what one of the overdoses was. Uh, also, I saw, you know, you know, when I was in D.C., they were talking about New York City. They had a high rate of fentanyl. Uh, they had a rate with 171 pounds of fentanyl. And they said that fentanyl could have killed 4 million people. Mm -hmm. And that's how potent that fentanyl, that fentanyl is. Well, and, you, uh, it was worth millions. Right. You have different layers of fentanyl. You have fentanyl, then you have carfentanil, which is even carfentanil is more of a, uh, would be used for an elephant tranquilizer. OK, my, my question is, either you or the sergeant probably, but, you know, and they were talking about factories. We call them fentanyl factories now. They don't have to, you know, smuggle it in. It actually actually got factories going. Do we have that in front of Yes, unfortunately, there is some around. They're also producing drugs a little different now. Uh, our drug enemies seem to be on top of it, when they get in and how they do it. Uh, but sometimes it's next to impossible find when they're making this stuff. And some of their labs are mobile labs? They, they don't make it in the house or garage anymore. A lot of their, some of their labs are mobile labs now. Mobile labs. Thank you, sir. I do have a comment. Uh, I am a member of the Northampton Lions Club, and uh, the club invited Chief Trustee out uh, at our last meeting and the purpose of it was he came out and he demonstrated the lupus tool for the group and uh, told the story about how it was purchased fundraising all that kind of stuff and they were very impressed with that and I just want to thank him on, on behalf of council for coming out that was nice for him to do that they were very impressed with the lupus tool they had no clue what it was until he brought it in <laughs> yeah. does Bethel Township have one yet? No, they don't. They're purchasing them with their love. They, they secured a two mil emergency levy, and uh, Chief King, from what I understand, uh, talked to him, he's planning on purchasing three. Oh. 
Yeah, just for stats, since we've had ours, we've had ours since April, and we've used it six times, and we have four saves out of six. Wow, great. Good. He did. He did share some information that we didn't know if that Pike Township has one. And so we're real interested in seeing what we could do to see to encourage German Township to purchase one also. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Cullen. Thank you very much, Chief, for all the work you guys have been doing. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And moving on with the city manager report would be our police discussion with our uh, police administrator, Sergeant Underwood. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Mayor, Council, and citizens. <coughs> Uh, let's see, New Peral deputies were dispatched to 56 calls. Assaults, zero. Domestic violence, there were six. Overdose, we had zero. Death, we had nine. On injury crash, we had one. Injury crash, there were none. Citations, there were 32. Drug complaints, we had three. And I have suicide attempts. We responded to two of them. Uh, we get sometimes we get the calls a little different, or sometimes we'll get the calls attempted suicide, and it'll be something else. And then the girls forget to clear it out or leave it in for whatever reason. So, but whatever, we're down. <laughs> okay. For the month of October, domestic violence calls and theft calls are up along with citations. It's not surprising going into the holiday season. If you have a disagreement with a loved one, just try to work it out. Or maybe one of you need to, to leave for a short period of time. Uh, I think everyone at time to time needs to cool down time. Having a lot of them go to jail, especially this time of year, can be devastating to all involved. And as for citations, people are still speeding and getting caught. And we slow down. But I've said numerous times the citations are not cheap. You can get a $125 to Five hundred dollar citation very easily, and I would not want to have to pay for that for going over the speed limit. Last month, we had some equipment violations and citations were issued. Um, it's important to keep your license plate current, to have your vehicle in good working order, especially when, when it's just started. So, what the guys look for is headlights, license plate lights, um, and they're making stops. And that's legal. And you think, well, why aren't you out fighting real crime? Well, that license plate light being out, when we check the car, we, we might find whatever, marijuana, fentanyl. I, it's, it's hard telling what you can find. So uh, with that, and on a good note, that the island will be back in work in New Cloud by the end of the month. Little birdies telling me maybe next week, uh, and just want everyone to be safe and have a great Thanksgiving. Thank you, Sergeant. Council, any questions for Sergeant? Uh, I was going to say good job on the arrest on Smith or the uh, bust on Smith. Has there been any arrests yet <laughs> on on, on the uh, the drug bust you guys had? Unfortunately, uh, that information. Is not given out uh, at the present time. Uh, we have had numerous drug arrests up here in September, and it's still continuing. Our drug unit keeps things very tight and quiet. Um, the drug people know what we're doing. Uh, but it's just a, it's just to keep it so we can act again. There's nothing secret about it, other than once word gets out, it's, it's even more difficult. Find it. But no, I do not know. Uh, it could be a few months before it, it would go to court. If you see in the paper the case has been dismissed, that does not mean the case has been dismissed. It means it's probably going to the grand jury and they are going to decide if there's a case or not. So it's dismissed from one court to another court. So the grand jury can take a look at it. Thank you, Mr. Lighty. Council, any other questions or comments? Thank you, Sergeant. Mm -hmm. Appreciate the report. Mr. Beard, back to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Sergeant Underwood. And moving on under informational items, uh, updates under city parks. This was on there last week. 
Uh, but this time I got pictures, so I do want to pass them around. But it just says, uh, we have secured grant money to install baby swings at Smith Park and Willowwood Park. The install date is the November 28th, and we will be having a ribbon cutting ceremony to open those in the middle of December, so we'll need some volunteers to come swing. As part of the grant requirement, unfortunately the grant requirement will, will not excuse the ribbon cutting ceremony if it happens to be during winter months, but if we have to have someone sit on a baby swing to get free baby swings, we'll do that. <laughs> I did, hand drawn, no. So I have color ones, so basically this is the version that's gonna go at Smith Park, and it's gonna go right to the side of where we're currently at. The color scheme kind of matches what's already out there. Um, it does, there's two, uh, but they're not cheap. Uh, but we'll give, we don't have any baby swings in, in, in our town, period. So this is yeah, definitely a good relief. You can pass that down to council so they can see the color combination. And then this is the one that will be going at Willowick Park, just on the ed ed edge of the uh, bay. And the color scheme of Willow Park's is blues and grays. Correct? Blues and light blues. What? Blues and light blues are gray and, and tan. Oh, maybe yeah. I'm getting the tan confused with grays. So they're all, they're all designed to match what's currently there. Um, so far, this has been really well received, especially from our young parents, who quite frankly have had no place to take their babies to swing. Pass that around. What park is this right here? Oh, it doesn't. It doesn't. That's that's the that we're flattening out Smith Parks. So it's going to be one level thing. No, I'm kidding. Um, uh, so in addition to the to the baby swings, also uh, stated at the last council meeting, there'll also be mulch addition. Mr. Kiko had brought that up. That there is a pile of mulch behind the school. Please do not mix anything else with that particular pile of mulch because it is great for playground use. Uh, moving on, uh, fat metals, again, we'll be seeking a property and tax abatement for the new addition. More information will be coming to council here relatively shortly. Um, upcoming city health insurance, again, this is, on, this is a repeat from the last one. Still getting quotes, we had the staff meeting. I have a pretty good indication of which way we're going to go. We're still waiting to see if MMO will give us a standalone quote. I don't think they will at this point. Um, I'll give them to the end of this week, um, but we can uh, probably have at least an emergency ordinance in place for our city's health insurance when it comes when it comes time to, for council to vote on that. Also, 2018 pool season. With your packets, I have included information for the 2018 pool season that says uh, about season passes and other great things. Great time to buy some for Christmas presents. So please pass this information along. Also in the city manager's report, we have a photocopy of the new Carlisle holiday events uh, starting on December 2nd. Um, so it has a list of a few different things. Please take a moment and share this with your friends as well. It's a great time to get to your community and get out and see some of your neighbors you haven't seen in a while, but also celebrate the Christmas time. And also dealing with the holidays, our gracious uh, downtown business owners have agreed to extend their holiday hours. This is on the city's Facebook page. It's also with the city council packets. Again, please share this with your family and friends and support your local businesses downtown. They all have some great things you can go and buy and unique things you can go, excuse me, go in and buy. So please support your local downtown business. And the last item on the city manager's report, um, I've heard a few, from a few council members uh, throughout the past year about paying off the cruiser loan. I didn't want to go and initiate that until we figured out how the November 8th election was going to go. Since that has uh, passed, we did pay off the 2016 police cruiser loan, uh, $16,432.36. Um, so that did come out of our police levy funds, but this is another way that we can reduce our overall city debt profile. And that is all I have for the city manager's report, and I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Bridge. Yes, sir. Since we paid off that uh, cruiser, are we looking now since the levy passed to buy another one uh, here shortly? We or? will be discussing that with Mr. Kiko in December. Thank you. Yep. I was actually going to kind of touch on the same subject. So we've got two newer Fords now, right? The we've got, Fords. yeah, we've got two SUVs. SUVs. Mm -hmm. Two? Both are paid. Two. Yeah, what year is it? One's a 16, one's a 15? One's a 16 and one's a 17. So. Yep. Uh, so far, just a few minor recall things we've got to get taken care of. <laughs> uh, Mr. Bridge, I just want to ask you a quick question. Sure. Kind of off of uh, Other than issue four and a couple other you know, 
key things that happened over here. Uh, we still got a month to go. How do you think the year went so, overall? Overall, I think it went very well. Anything specific you want me to discuss no, I'm about? Just, I'm just curious what your overall take was for the year. I mean, overall, I think it's fantastic. Um, issue four kind of put a hindrance on things. I think some issues amongst council put some hindrance on things. But other than that, I think it was a great year. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Mr. Uh, can we talk about the pool a little bit? So we got this. Or? Sure. Fire away. Um, one thing that's kind of concerning is Are we allowed talking about things that's not on the agenda, though, or anything? Uh, yeah, it's yeah. not legislation. Okay. I mean, yeah, Fair enough. Here we go. Sorry, I don't want to get 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 get. Two more months. Fair enough. Uh, the one thing that happens all the time, I'll highly contest contest with this, is that uh, we always the water is always leaking, and they're always finding ways that the water is leaking. They said that the concrete is in good shape. You know, have they really pinpointed where the 20,000 gallons a day goes to? Yeah, pretty much in our deep well. It just leaks out? Is that, that's not normal. So I thought we found a way to, to stop that a couple years ago. We, we have stopped some of it, but more keep coming along. We've had a company come in. That year we dropped it pretty significantly, and they, they put epoxy in. They drill holes and put epoxy in. It expands in the hole. Yeah, that stuff's highly ex uh, expensive, and um, we're looking to do that again because that's not something we've been able to afford every year, so we do it. And uh, I've actually requested to be able to try and get that in the capital improvement in the budget this year to possibly do that for that leaking purpose. Yeah, it was a pretty good report. I'm glad what it says, you know. I want anybody to, I mean, to know that it says that our pool is relatively good condition. 449 years old. However, and then start talking about the league and other things. You know, I hope that you work on it a little bit. Good, sir. Thank you very much. Got some other questions and comments. All right, Mr. Brewer, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We will go down to comments from the members of the public. If anybody has a question or comments, please go to the podium with your name and address. <coughs> no, I'll fight. Tom for everybody. All right, we're going to get down. We're going to get close to the end of the year. I know. <laughs> That would look like you got something to say. Yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving on. Good. Uh, Community reports, none tonight. Resolutions, none. Ordinances. Mr. Paul, you're ready. Ordinance 17 40, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance amending the estimated resources of the city of New Carlisle to the county auditor. Auditor that will be available to appropriate for the fiscal year beginning January January 1, 2017. Mr. Mayor. Wow. <laughs> Motion to adopt ordinance 17-40. I said it. I'm getting a little worried here. He's doing a job. Uh just an explanation of this ordinance. Um, Anytime that we need to adjust uh, what we budgeted for, uh, how much we think we are going to get in, um, we have to do legislation. So uh, what we're finding is, um, am I explaining this right, Colleen? Yes. Yes, I'm good. Sorry, I was thrown off in my own, own mental head. So anyway, we are receding less than what we anticipated. So that's why we are, have to do the legislation that's in front of you for vote today. Received less, you say, as in a negative impact. Yeah, that's why it says this decrease. Right. So well, I saw that earlier, and I saw that you know the decrease, like for example, in the pool, mm -hmm. but it says additional revenue received. So I was just kind of curious exactly. Where does it say additional revenue received? Under right. On the right of the pool. Mm -hmm. That's why it kind of threw me off. Yeah. We receded 
more revenue for the pool, but we did not need the transfer that was uh, in the general fund. Right. Okay. So we have to be within about 5% of our auditor certificate of what we estimate our resources are, so we adjust our appropriations to make sure that we don't overspend. So that's why you're going to see the next one on reducing the appropriations. Well, the pool was that we did not need the general fund transfer. Okay. We received additional revenue. It's a little hard to explain, but we're reducing the um, estimated resources by the 15. We had, I think, 40,000 in there from the right, pool. Right. So, so that's a good thing. So that's a negative event. It's a good thing. It's okay. 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 That's, well, you need to know. that's what I was curious about. <laughs> I don't want to put you on the spot, but should we not have decreased our general fund because that's where the transfer comes out of? No, because we're still within a, okay. a good okay. percentage there at this time. So let me rephrase that. Yes, it is good for the swimming pool because you don't have to transfer out of the general fund. However, your water revenue, it's not a good thing. Right, right. And, and that, like I said, that was the one that threw me off out of the three. Yep. So, okay. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Harris. Have some other questions comments? Are you ready, Mr. Collier? Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Lethley? Yes. Mr. Craven? Yes. Ordinance 1740, Pat 7 to 0. Ordinance 17 41, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance reducing certain appropriations of the city of New Carlisle, Ordinance 17 11E. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Watt. Move we adopt Ordinance 17 41. Second. <coughs> you get this? Yes. Okay. An explanation of this ordinance uh, since we amended our estimated resources, we also have to follow suit and amend how much we are able to spend out of those particular funds. Questions, Council? <clears throat> Are you ready, Mr. Collier? Mr. Lighting? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Leslie? Yes. Mr. Craybacher? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Ordinance 17-41 passes 7-0. Ordinance 17-44, introduction tonight, public hearing in action on 12-4-17, our next meeting. An ordinance authorizing the disposal of unneeded or inoperable city vehicles and equipment. Ordinance 17-45, introduction tonight, public hearing in action on 12-4-17. An ordinance establishing, establishing temporary appropriations for fiscal year 2018. Ordinance 17-46, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 12-4-17. An ordinance amending the estimated resources of the City of New Carlisle to the County Auditor that will be available to appropriate for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2017. Ordinance 17-47, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 12-4-17. An ordinance increasing certain appropriations of the City of New Carlisle, Ordinance 17 11E. Thank you, sir. Good. I'm going to get those first sure. few. Other business Congressman Warren Davison will hold mobile office hours at the City Building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1 30 p.m. till 2 p.m. And the city offices will be closed November 23rd and 24th to observe Thanksgiving. Thank you, sir. Uh, real quick, I just wanted to say a couple of words real quick. I know uh, we just had the election, and thankfully uh, issue four failed. Uh, we've got some new council members coming on board soon, within the month, next month, at the end of next month, December. Um, so congratulations to those who, I know, well, the two of them are still up in the air, but a couple of them are elected, so. Uh, congratulations to them, and uh, I just you know I want to say also that when when council starts over for the new year, this should, maybe should have been saved for the end of December. I just you know I want everybody to make sure that you know we're all doing our best to to work together. And, you know, 
works with a common goal, make the new Palau the best place it possibly can. Uh, and a lot of tensions can get high with uh, issues and people, you know, differences on opinions and things of that nature. But, uh, you know, I just, you know, I want to stress all the time members and I'm not, you know, I'm not saying for any particular reason, I'm saying that we all try to make sure we, you know, give our best to the city because that's what the city deserves. So, uh, I just want to thank everybody for doing a good job this year and uh, hopefully we'll have some, uh, some good times and keep the city moving forward in January with the new council members. And thank you to uh, the two that will be leaving, Mr. Craig and Mr. Lowry, for their services as well. But uh, we'll hit that up again in some of that a little bit early. But, uh, <laughs> so, but uh, also, before you finish up, Mr. Uh, Mr. Collier, uh, Randy called me today and never seen a city manager do this before. Um, he's invited everybody and the citizens to his house for Thanksgiving this year. Oh, I have? <laughs> no, you got, you got me wrong with someone else, man. I try to feed 6,000 people. Okay. I'll be there. Are you leaving? You, know, you bought that new house. I thought it was kind of roomy. No, no, it's not that roomy. <laughs> I guess the line would start forming outside about 6 a.m. to get something to eat. You've already got a bigger TV, too, for football. Oh, I already got a big projector in my basement, because that's my basement. <laughs> and, and you're definitely not going down there unless you're an Ohio State fan. Mr. Kitko's seen it, so um, he knows what it looks like. Uh, all right. <laughs> I didn't know what you were going to say. I'm like, what are we talking about? I'm like, what am I getting? Like, what did I do? I'm like, crap, what did I do? No, we did talk this morning. I'm thinking, oh, God, what? What did I say? <laughs> when you're ready, Mr. Collier. <laughs> good, good. Back to the You can breathe. Oh, crap. Up in there, three o'clock. All right, Mr. Collier. Okay. Any, anyone Carry can come down, I guess. We're going back to other business now. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, work session for water rates uh, is set for December the 4th. Uh, that's our next council meeting. That discussion will occur after the legislative session of the meeting. And this is to prevent two late night meetings in a week. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. Is council okay with that? I didn't have time to call each or one of you asked. I know Mr. Reynolds, he's, he's a busy man. We're all got our things going on. Mm -hmm. I figured if we can go into it, have some discussion after legislation, that saves people from coming half two yeah. nights in the one. Yeah, do we have to vote on that? No, it's just work sessions. It's just really, and then we'll do some legislation for. T oh yes, uh, it, it will be introduced that night. So, unfortunately, we'll need a decision that night. Or we can just call a special meeting and introduce legislation for the second meeting in December. I am a highly encouraging council to get this resolved before the end of this year, so we can budget for 18. And we'll all be. We also have some other things to discuss going for 18, but. Water is first and foremost. So everyone's okay with having the work session that night. I don't want to step on anyone's desk. It's, it's really not a work session. It's part of the regular meeting, right? Well, well it can be a work session. I don't okay. care how you want to label it. We'll have, We're all just we'll going to get together and have the discussion. Yeah. That is on a Monday, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. The uh, New Carolina Christmas tree lighting ceremony will be Saturday, December the 2nd at 6.30 p.m. in the downtown area. I take it it's the same area where yeah. there is always a okay. uh, That's all I have, man. Um, one more quick thing on the tree. Mr. Kick, I'm just out of curiosity, where did the tree come from this year? I haven't heard of it. Where did the tree come from? Uh, we'll get that all finalized, but come out of Park Lane. Somebody's yard? Or mm -hmm. It's a nice tree. Yeah, it's a nice tree. tree. Yeah. Yeah. Does he know it? I'm just joking, I was just serious. What did you say? I, I didn't even hear you. I said I was somebody's yard. Oh, oh, oh. Don't, 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 don't go in. Was that the tree Bethel was using this year? <laughs> they were going to go in. Councilman right. Reynolds, do you want to say anything about the Christmas tree lighting ceremony? Uh, just a quick thing. It, uh, Dean covered it. Uh, if you have ornaments you want to bring, it's going to start at 6 30. You can decorate with Santa there, candy canes. I figure about maybe 100 people show up. So that's for 75, so we have 100 candy canes. If not, I can go and get some more. Uh, working on how to get hot chocolate down there. That's going to, it's kind of a logistical nightmare, but we're going to try to do that too. Uh, Pictures with Santa and uh, the show car will be seeing some up. 
Christmas carols like they always do. And I will say hats off to Councilman Reynolds because I was there for the first one and to see this thing grow every year since it's only, this is the third year, yeah, I think. Yeah. Um, you come on Wolf's Christmas. It does, and I tell you what, it brings people together and it's just a mountain of how it's growing, so hats off to you for starting this new tradition because a lot of people love it. It was there when I was a boy, we sung for you know, yeah. 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 Fair enough. Good deal. All right, uh, we will be going into an executive session to discuss compensation rates for certain management personnel. Uh, no votes will be taking place during that meeting, so we will take a five minute break. Let me add that uh, when council comes back into said regular session, there'll be no further business after that one. So. Motion by Mr. Reynolds, yeah. second by Mr. Leffley. Uh, you ready for a vote, ma'am? Yes, sir. <laughs> Mr. Craybacher? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. And Mr. Leffley? Yes. <laughs> Executive session. We'll take five more words. I'd like to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving.